before you listen to the podcast, I want to tell you about one of my favorite things in the world, the Lit Teacher Training. Creating this comprehensive teacher training really felt like my life's work compilation, and I hold nothing back. My mission is for everyone to know and understand the whole body, functional movement, and the how and why behind the movement choices we make to feel empowered, transforming your own lives, and sharing that knowledge with others. In the Lit Teacher Training, we investigate the poses and transitions, the energy flow through this vessel of our body, and work to move through space with increased precision and fluidity to create more joy and fun. So ask yourself, are you enjoying the life you're living in your body? If you're not fully, there's no better time than now to create new pathways and new opportunities. And with that fresh palette, attempt to emphasize growth and connection rather than accomplishment. Learning how to give people feedback in their bodies so that they retrain their own neural pathways and habitual movement patterns is truly a gift. And you will get that in this training. With both our self-guided and in real-time virtual experience, The 10-week training is rich in functional anatomy from my background as a physical therapist, methodology, and yogic philosophy through a modern-day lens. Like the hundred of others around the world, you will complete the training with new skills, sound knowledge, and confidence to teach others. And you have access to the training for life. Finally, our Lit Teacher community is vibrant and supportive, and being a part of it is like having all your friends with who you speak the same language with the same passion. So join this experience for reverence of the body as the container of the divine to change your life. Go to lityogatraining.com and I can't wait for you to join our community. I'm Laura Hyman and welcome to Redefining Movement, a lit podcast designed to investigate all aspects of movement from my background in physical therapy and neuroscience. My mission is to help everyone find freedom through smarter movement patterns and compassion for ourselves and others, so together we can live our most uplifted lives, benefiting all beings. Welcome to Friday with Friends. Strap in and get ready. I have a magnetic guest on today. I'm still just kind of vibing high from talking with him. Craig Goldberg is what everybody needs. The world needs a relaxation expert. That's right. He's an expert in relaxation, but he's doing it from a very methodical and medical way. Craig is a certified vibroacoustic therapy practitioner, and he's on a quest to help humanity achieve a deeper sense of inner calmness through the use of sound and vibration technology. We talk about his background. He is from Long Island originally, and how living in the Northeast really stressed out his system and how he needed to figure out a way to find more balance and harmony. His journey took him also into yoga festivals, helping his wife who is sick, and so much more. He is the co-founder of an app. But you'll just have to listen to hear all about that and feel for yourself how you can be in more harmony. Please enjoy my conversation with Craig. Welcome, Craig. Super excited to have you on today for so many reasons. Let's be honest, the top one is you're like a leading expert in relaxation. This is something that you're devoted to in every way. So how did you get to this stage? Were you always interested in this aspect of meditation and sound? What directed you there? I think I got this way by being stressed and spun out and anxious and spread thin and out of control and doing everything that I possibly could to bring myself back on the rails until I found ways that I could calm and relax my mind. Then you do that enough and you start to develop some technology and then you start to talk to people about it. And before you know it, somebody's like, you're an expert in relaxation. You're like, cool, I guess I am. Sounds good. And I think it's really actually humbling and just welcoming to know that an expert could be somebody who came from a place that was really bound and stressed up. So talk to us about the before relaxation expert came in. What was your life like? And What were some of the markers or callings that got you into this path? Just before I get into kind of the details of what those origins are, I think most of the fantastic coaches, guides that are teaching and looking out for the well-being of others were often needing to figure it out for themselves first or had a mentor or somebody that helped them figure it out first. I'm 44. How does a 26-year-old tell me about life? 
I haven't even lived life yet. And that's not to discount all of them. I'm sure there's fabulous 26 year old life coaches out there, but like you got to live a little bit of life before you can realize that. I work with a number of ketamine clinics, for example, and there's a number of doctors that haven't tried their own medicine. That doesn't make sense to me. And I tell them that flat out. I'm like, doc, you got to try it. You got to see what your clients and your customers are utilizing and how they're in that space. So I think most therapists that are out there come from folks that needed the therapy in the first place and are speaking and coming from a place of experience. I'm not saying there's any absolutes in this world, and there could be fabulous folks that don't have the experience and have worked with enough pedigree to know it. But most, I think, of the most fabulous folks are those that came from that space or needing that coaching or that therapy that they are now offering, right? The old adage of like, there's a guy in the bottom of a hole and the first guy walks by with a rope and throws the rope down and it falls down and he's no help. And then the next guy walks by with a ladder and he puts the ladder down in the hole and the ladder was too short. And then the third guy walks by and he jumps down into the hole and the guy says, what are you doing? You're crazy. Now we're both stuck in this hole. And he goes, yeah, but I've already gotten out of a hole like this. So here's how we're going to get out and leads him out. I think there's a lot to that. For me, I'm born and raised in New York. It's a very stressful part of the country. <laughs> New York will make or break you. And I certainly made it in that town. And in order to make it in that town, you're dealing with a pressure cooker. It's a melting pot and it's a pressure cooker all at the same time. And I was working New York City nightlife. At one point, I had three different jobs over the course of the week. I was spread thin. I was working my tail off. I was pushing and digging in and drinking a lot of alcohol and using a lot of stimulants and drinking a lot of caffeine and a lot of coffee. My adrenals were shot and I needed to relax. And don't get me wrong. If you looked at me at that time frame in that part of my life, I was in my 20s and 30s. I looked like I was having a great time and I was having a great time. I didn't realize until I got out of that environment that I really didn't take a whole lot of time to slow down. And I'd have five hours on a golf course and I'd get out to Long Island and see my parents and I'd get out to the Hamptons in the summer and I would do all the things that were fashionably timely, if you will. But once you start to slow down, you start to realize that you need to slow down. And I needed ultimately sound and vibration, which is obviously what I do in my background to take me to even deeper levels of that relaxation. And now I teach people how to reach the deepest depths of relaxation using sound and vibration. How did you land on sound and vibration? Is that something that you tried once trying to get to sleep or did you have some musicality in your background? Not that's at all required for sound and vibration, but what was the entry point? I've always loved music. I'm an audiophile. I've always liked high quality, high fidelity sound. I worked in New York City nightlife for 10 years. So I've been around nightclubs and sound systems, and I've just been around some of the most incredible ears when it comes to tuning sound systems and high quality, multi-million dollar sound systems. So I was traveling the country, teaching, training, and educating on the efficacy of essential oils. I was working with a very big essential oil brand, traveling internationally, fortunately, to teach people about the efficacy of essential oils. I was going from yoga retreat to yoga retreat. I know you do as well. And I would gravitate towards the sound therapists, the sound healers, the sound baths, these acoustic instruments, bells, chimes, gongs, didgeridoos. And I just loved it. I didn't know what it was about that experience, but I laid down in front of this experience. And as soon as that first bell, chime, didgeridoo was hit, I was on cloud nine and I'd wake up 45 minutes, an hour and a half later, however long it was, I felt like a million bucks. I just knew that that was the thing that I did. So if I was speaking at a yoga retreat or a yoga festival, I'd check into my room, I'd set up my tent, I'd do whatever I needed to do. And then I would zip right over to the sound therapists. I was able to shed whatever skin I had, whatever weight I had on my shoulders was gone. Whatever stress I had, in my lower back, whatever stress I had in my shoulders and my neck, I just knew that I was more relaxed, that I was more ready, willing, and able to give myself to the audience that I was speaking in front of, to be more present, to be more grounded. And I just knew it made for a better experience at that particular event for that particular weekend. And being an audiophile, I wanted it when I wanted it. So I went home and at some point I was like, I'm going to create this myself. And I bought a gong CD and I went home and I put it in the CD player and I starfished out in the middle of my living room. And I took my center channel in between my legs, my front right, my front left, my rear right, my rear left, and I cranked it. And I didn't get the same effect. I just didn't have that same impact. And interestingly enough, about three months later, I get a phone call from my now business partner, Dom, who says, hey, I've got something you need to come check out. You got to come check out my sound lounge. And I fell in love. And I had this incredible experience on my now technology. And that was the beginning of a phenomenal partnership. And 
Dom's the greatest business partner I've ever had. He's tapped in, plugged in, graduated from the University of Santa Monica with a master's degree in spiritual psychology. He and I just see eye to eye in everything that we do. And it's been the easiest business I've ever had. And I just fell in love with the technology. We made the InHarmony Sound Lounge in 2016, the InHarmony Practitioner to augment body work in January of 18, and then the InHarmony Meditation Cushion in 20, and then the InHarmony Music Meditations app, which is the record label that drives everything that we do in 2021. We haven't looked back, continue to innovate, grow, build, share, educate. It's been a blast. So tell us the difference between that experience of lying in your living room and having the speakers all around, but not feeling the same impact versus creating that impact with your work? I was using the wrong technology is the short answer. This is called a tactile transducer. Inside here is a magnet. That magnet is oscillating back and forth. For those of you that can't see it, it kind of looks like a driver. It looks like what would be behind a cone in a stereo, in a speaker or subwoofer. And basically there's a magnet in that it oscillates a certain number of oscillations per second. So a 20 Hertz frequency is 20 oscillations per second. And we are basically translating music into vibration. And since you're laying on it, this is what's inside our sound lounge. There's four of them. There's two of them inside the practitioner. There's two of them inside our meditation cushion. You are connected to it. So therefore, as the magnet oscillates back and forth, it shakes your body. And the mechanoreceptors in your skin pick up on these vibrations and send a signal to your brain telling it that it's vibrating and picking up on that particular change in pressure and change in vibration. Can you talk a little bit about the 10 hertz because the ultrasound that is used in physical therapy clinics, if I remember correctly, I think it's anywhere from five to 10. It's the same waveform. It's just not making sound, but it's coming in. And the idea is that it is healing the connective tissue that might be damaged. Is this in an ultrasound or is this a PEMF? It's an ultrasound machine. I don't know enough because I haven't done the research, but that seems very low to me. Yeah, because if you get it too high, it creates too much heat. But what is it about that particular level that you have found to be healing? And in what way is it healing? Yeah. So vibroacoustic therapy is the formal body of research that governs what we do. And you can search VAT or vibroacoustic therapy, vibro vibration, acoustic sound. We're talking about vibration and sound and its impact on your physiology. Vibroacoustic therapy focuses on frequencies between 30 hertz and 120 hertz. Just to put that in further perspective, the human ear picks up on frequencies between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. So we're talking about the low end of that spectrum. That subwoofer that you have in your home stereo system, any home stereo system that has a sub is typically 80 hertz and below. So we're talking about very low end frequencies and really anything 100 hertz and below you don't hear with your ears, you can, but predominantly you feel it through the mechanoreceptors in your skin. Anything above 100 hertz, even if it's coming through a subwoofer or a driver a tactile transducer like this, you're still hearing it. You're not really feeling it because the vibration is just too fast. It does. And I just looked up the ultrasound. So it is a form of mechanical energy. It's not electric. And it says normal human sound range is from 16 hertz to 15 to 20,000. And the mechanical vibration used in ultrasound is typically between one and three megahertz. And above five megahertz, and you're talking about millions of hertz. So yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah. And then can you talk a little bit about your wife and your exploration when she was ill? I'm sure that you had your own pathway and were following whatever that you needed for your nervous system. I imagine it was a convergence of a lot of different things, but your wife had been ill. This is going back 12 years ago at this point. My wife got sick. Nobody could tell us what was wrong. I think it's a pretty common story in medicine and awakening. People get sick and they can't tell you what's going on. And right now we've got more autoimmune things happening and more things that people can't diagnose. And I love doctors. I love modern medicine. I really do. I think it saved a lot of lives. And I also think it's taken a lot of lives. And I think there's a lot of doctors out there that have great intentions and execute very poorly. And I think there's a lot of doctors out there that just should not be practicing medicine, unfortunately. Functional medicine, integrative medicine, I think is going to be the future. And I think taking a whole look at the entire system to better understand and diagnose is key. I think too many specialists are out there focused on any one thing, not being able to see the entire system. And that's basically what happened with my wife. My wife had three symptoms that were really taxing on us. And this went on for about six months, test after test, doc after doc. Nobody could tell us what was wrong. All of her lymph nodes from her waist up were swollen. 
not just the ones in the throat, behind the ear, underneath the arm, in the back of the neck. We've got lymph nodes, 500 of them in the body, and they were all swollen. So clearly the body was reacting to something. My wife is Turkish. She has beautiful olive skin. And all of a sudden she was getting these pimples out of nowhere. It was distraught. And then the last one is actually ultimately what flipped the lid on this whole thing. And she would lose her voice. And not necessarily periodically, but just about every Saturday around three o'clock in the afternoon. So we were hanging out at a festival. Shout out to my friend Roxy. We were hanging out with her and she goes, she lost her voice and she was drinking a beer. We were hanging out at a party and she goes, put the beer down, get rid of gluten. You'll get your voice back. And she was like, what? And she goes, we drank beer almost seven days a week. Go out to happy hour on Thursday night. Then Friday was a half day and we'd go to a bar somewhere and have a beer in our hand. And then Friday night you go out for drinks and dinner and you got a beer and then you go out Friday night and you've got beer and you're up until four in the morning. Then you fall asleep for a few hours. You wake up the next morning, you're at the beach, you're having another beer. And on top of that, we're eating pizza and pasta and bulgur wheat. It's death by a thousand cuts. And by Saturday afternoon, around two, three o'clock, the buildup would be so much that she would lose her voice. She would have this inflammatory response. And sure enough, my wife got rid of gluten a hundred percent. And within 72 hours, all of her symptoms went away. Wow. You know, that again is, she's not alone. This is some autoimmune response that is very prevalent. Obviously, there's a whole industry on gluten-free. I mean, this is 12 years ago, right? 12 years ago, Whole Foods wasn't really around. Sprouts wasn't really around. Natural Grocers, if you're on the West Coast, wasn't really around. There wasn't gluten-free things sporadically and all over the place like there are now. There was like one row, Glutino, there was like a couple of substitute products, but for the most part, it was basically just saying no to a lot of stuff. There was no edible gluten-free pizza. It wasn't enjoyable. Like today, I think it's really easy for you to go gluten-free and not miss gluten. Pizza doesn't taste exactly the same. I certainly get it. I also still have regular pizza. So if you ever see me in New York City, you'll see me on 14th Street having artichoke pizza. But now I've cleaned up so much. So my wife gave up gluten. I gave up gluten. Over the next six months, my wife got unbelievably better and I got worse. And it was really weird trying to figure out why I'm getting worse and worse. And I'm sitting in bed one morning, we're planning our weddings and I'm just doing research on gluten sensitivity and the immune system because I'm sick. I'm not well. I have a low grade fever. I've got mucus buildup. I've got a cough that won't go away. My skin didn't look any better. Really, I gave up gluten 100%. We're eating the same diet. My wife got better and I got worse and I'm trying to figure it out. Eventually, I come across genetically modified food. Didn't know what that was. Did a little bit of research on how they actually genetically modify our food. Became horrified. And that led to really a deep dive into understanding what we put in our mouth, what we put in our skin, and what we allow to be kept in the air around us. And that's when we realized just how toxic this world is that we live in day in and day out. And we became viciously protective of those three environments. I knew where every morsel of food came from. Shopped at the farmer's markets. I brought my own food with me everywhere I went. I knew where my water came from. I either cleansed it and filtered it myself, didn't drink bottled water, no more processed foods. Everything was whole food, plant-based. I'm now back on the meat. But then I went three and a half years of whole food, plant-based. I knew where my food came from. And that took a little while to get to. At first, we just started cleaning up our act. And that's what led to essential oils because we gave up deodorant. We gave up lotions. We gave up perfume and cologne. And I came home from work one day and my wife gave me a kiss at the door and she was like, how long have you smelled like that? And I'm like, what are you talking about? I smell fine. Well, I showered this morning and I just worked the full day. And she's like, I'm going to go to the store. I saw these things called essential oils. I'm going to go get us some essential oils. And that's how it started. It started with us just wanting to smell better and find a good source of how to smell good. So she went out and bought the Now brand or something at our health food store. And then I started meeting reps of these bigger brands and I started learning more and more about their efficacy and their availability. And I like to speak. So we would start to teach people and train people. And before you know it, we had a pretty budding business and we're traveling around going to these yoga festivals and meeting all these incredible people talking about healthy living. We had a podcast for a little while, which kudos to you. I bow my head. It is a huge labor of love and takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. So if you like what you hear, click those five stars. It goes a long way. I can tell you that. Thank you. It sounds like everything was just this wonderful rolling rock of goodness that was just collecting information and bringing you in alignment, but also in contact with the folks that you now eventually came to work with. And going from essential oils, which I know is not just aroma, there's many other benefits. So I'd love for you to talk now about how the nervous system, how the brain is impacted by 
these mechanical receptors by sound, by vibration. I think most people know they've had some moment where a certain song came on and they felt their emotions shift. They felt their nervous system either heighten or just calm or even get sad. You know, it's like there's so many layers to music and sound and vibration. Yeah. Look, music moves us. Whatever your music is, moves you. And my music moves me. And my music may not necessarily move you. I just got back from a three-day trip, Sarasota. And I was sitting at my buddy's water store opening, shout out to Craig and H2Go, which is where this beautiful bottle came from. And I was talking to this nutritionist. I'm sitting around a biocharger, which is a, another piece of technology that kind of lifts your vibration and brings you back into balance. And I'm just having like casual conversation at the water store. And he's this like chemist of a nutritionist. It was really awesome, the depth of the conversation that we were able to get into, because obviously this is my background too, and I'm self-taught and he was self-taught. And he's like, people don't think I like heavy metal, but you sit down in my car, I crank it loud and I like heavy metal. And I'm like, that's cool. I'm a house guy. I like house music. And for me, I put on a groovy, deep house track and I'm like in the zones. And there's people that like Megadeth and there's people that like hardcore music and there's people that like polka. Your music moves you. And I think that that's a really beautiful thing. What most people don't realize is that sound waves are actually pressure waves. And what we're actually hearing through the cochlea in our ear and perceiving is changes in pressure that's coupled with your eyes and your vision, which about 30% of your hearing comes through your vision. And that has a lot to do with turning on and off what to focus on. Right now, you're looking at the camera or you're looking at the screen, looking at my lips, and it's basically saying, look, focus on Craig and what he's saying and tune out everything else because your brain processes something like 4 billion bits of information per second. And that's the subconscious mind. And your conscious mind can handle something like four bits of information. And it's the reticular activator system that is telling your brain what to focus on. And that is done a lot of times with our eyes, sense of smell, and what's in front of us. What most people don't realize is that changes in sound is changes in pressure. And what my voice is doing right now is shaking the air, which is being echoed and further manipulated by my lips and my mouth to change the shape of the pressure waves that are being sent, which are being picked up by this microphone, which are coming through your speakers or your headphones. And your ears are picking up in the changes of the pressure from the driver that's in those headphones. And that's basically the speaker of a cone that we see moving in and out on a car stereo, or somebody's got 15s in the back of their truck, or you're at a nightclub, or you're looking at a speaker, it's actually changing the pressure and reproducing the recorded changes in pressure from the microphone. And the mechanoreceptors in your skin, which we have all over our skin, are also sending, it's part of that 4 billion signals that are being sent to the brain every second. And I'll give you a great example, which is you don't walk around all day feeling your clothes until you heard me say, feel your clothes. So those mechanoreceptors are constantly sending information to you and your brain is deciding if it's important or not. Right now, my feet are cold. The mechanoreceptors are sending temperature gauge to be like, my feet are cold. It's really interesting when you start to think about. So what we do at In Harmony is we are basically coupling the feelings that you feel through the mechanoreceptors in your skin. And we are mirroring and matching the same frequencies that you hear in your ear. This creates a three-dimensional, fully immersive sound experience that makes you feel as though you're inside the music in a very unique way. And this has an impact on your physiology. This has an impact on your nervous system. This has an impact on every muscle in your body. It increases circulation. It increases lymphatic drainage. It increases and activates all of the detox pathways in your body. It sends a message to every muscle in your body telling it to relax, overriding the electrical signals sent by your nervous system that might be telling it to contract or to protect. From the outside in, every single aspect of your body is relaxed, including kicking in the chemical cascades associated with calm and relaxed and allowing the body to quite literally relax from the inside out. And that happens almost involuntarily. It is possible for you to override it if you're having a particularly stressful day. But generally speaking, we turn a sympathetic nervous system response, otherwise known as fight or flight or stress and anxiety. And we turn that into parasympathetic, otherwise known as calm and relaxed or rest and digest. And when your body is relaxed, it performs the way it was beautifully designed to perform. And when your body is stressed and anxious, it's in life-saving mode and it's not performing all of the day-to-day -day activities that it needs to do to maintain itself. And if you need to do that for two or three hours, that's great. But if you're stressed and anxious day after day, week after week, month after month, 
your body doesn't have the time it needs to reset itself, to maintain itself, to take care of itself. And that opens up the door to disease. It opens up the door to any number of ailments and issues. And I'll leave you with this one stack because I think it's really important. Of the top 10 reasons why Americans die, six out of the 10 are born of stress and anxiety, which means we remove the stress and anxiety and those six reasons for death go away. Yeah, because stress and anxiety just lower the threshold. And then that just invites all the potential dwelling disease to manifest. So let's just talk about the practical application of this. So say somebody's listening right now and they're like, this sounds amazing. And I'm not stressed all the time, but I definitely have too much stress in my life. What can I do to be efficient and utilize? And what should I get? And where do I get it? First things first, you don't need anything. You really need your breath and that awareness. And great yoga practice is a beautiful thing for stress and anxiety. And there's countless apps. I think of countless folks that will teach you yoga. You might be able to pull up your own stuff that you can simply lay down, take a few moments, do a sun salutation or two, like I start my mornings and soak up the breath. The breath controls the mind, the mind controls the body. And if you want something a little bit more than that, we've got an app. It's in the iOS and the Google Play App Store. It's called In Harmony Music Meditations. It's $8 a month. It includes over 100 tracks. We call them music meditations that are all designed to calm and relax your nervous system with specific frequencies in specific sequences that have been proven over and over again to relax the nervous system. Just one question. So we say we get that app. Are we going to have that same effect with the vibration without the little device yeah. So it depends on what you're listening to. Look, those headphones that you've got on your ears right now have probably a 40 millimeter driver. They absolutely have the low end frequency response and you will absolutely feel at the very least around your ears, the mechanoreceptors will send those same signals to the brain. You obviously won't have the full body. You could connect your phone to a Bluetooth speaker that you already have in your house. You can listen to it in your car. A lot of times a car stereo system is the best stereo system people have access to. I don't recommend listening to our app while you're driving. I've got Sonos here at my house unbelievable clarity. I've got a subwoofer in my living room that's connected to the TV and I absolutely crank that track while we all lay down and listen to it. You want to upgrade a step further? Make the investment in the InHarmony Meditation Cushion, InHarmony Practitioner, or the InHarmony Sound Lounge. You can go to our website, IamInHarmony.com and make your purchase like normal e-commerce. What are the differences between those examples? Yeah. So the InHarmony Meditation Cushion retails for $6.99. It has two tactile transducers, two speakers, and it's in the form factor of a meditation cushion. It's designed to be sat in, lotus position, feet folded in the footwell. It's got some ergonomics in it. We have a design patent on it. It's really designed to roll your pelvic bone forward so that you can sit up straight. I used to not be able to sit in a lotus position, and now I'm good for 22, 33 minutes. Our music meditations range in time from two minutes to two hours. So most of our tracks are 11 minutes, 22 minutes, 33 minutes, 44 minutes. And our InHarmony Meditation Cushion is really designed for just that meditation. We serve two main communities with that piece of hardware, and it's those that can't meditate, that haven't been able to meditate. And all of a sudden you sit down and you listen to a music meditation, you lose yourself in the music. And before you know it, 11 minutes has gone by and you've just been meditating because you were zoned out listening to music. And then the second group is those that have been meditating 20 minutes a day for 20 years. And we take those people deeper, faster, and hold them in the depths of that meditative state longer than they ever would have been able to do on their own. And this happens over and over again. People are like, Craig, I've been meditating 20 minutes a day for 20 years, and I can't believe the experience that I just had on your tech. If you're a body worker or you want to augment body work with sound and vibration, we have the InHarmony Practitioner. It's four inches flat. It goes on top of a massage table. We don't sell the massage table. It comes with headphones, a speaker, all the cables and connections that you need to get it going. And it's specifically designed to augment body work. So I'm lucky enough to have a body worker come to my house twice a month and they give me body work while I'm listening to frequencies and feeling those vibrations. It is absolutely fantastic. I'll do 90 minutes. We have tracks in our app that are 90 minutes long and it's just pure bliss. And then our biggest unit is the InHarmony Sound Lounge, which retails for $5,678. And it's our Rolls Royce for sure. It's four tactile transducers. It's also ergonomically designed, dual density foam, Sennheiser headphones, 300 watt amplifier. It's just the most blissful experience. So I just traveled for three days. I spoke at a conference on Friday in Sarasota. I took a 9.30 a.m. flight out Saturday from Tampa. It was an hour drive, so I left at 6 a.m. I was exhausted. Slept a little bit on the plane. It was in Tyler, Texas, which is a two-hour drive from Dallas where I was. Had an evening of events and then hopped in the car, drove back to Dallas, had more appointments. I got back a wreck. I hopped on my sound lounge for an hour and a half last night. 
got a great night's sleep, woke up today, my three and a half year old, ready to go at 7 a.m. And here we are still going. I've been sitting at this desk since 8 a.m. this morning and I'm still ready to go. My grandmother just passed, bless her beautiful heart. And I'm off tonight on a red eye back to Florida, be with my parents for a couple of days and then work for a few days. I still keep the same pace that I had and my energy levels are still through the roof. And the reason for that is because I give myself time to rest and relax. This is what is missing for so many people is that they can't get the nervous system to respond, to be conducive to that. When you're in fight or flight to that end, cortisol and adrenaline are flowing through your blood. It's messing with your adrenals. It's messing with how your body regulates energy. And if you're in fight or flight, even not all the time, but just too often or more often than a few hours when something is really threatening your life, you're doing a lot of damage to how your body is designed to operate. And that will only last so long. I totally agree. This sounds amazing, Craig. Besides all of this technology, what would you say is something that has helped you tremendously live in more harmony in your life that you wish more people knew about? I think it goes back to that awareness. I think the more conscious we are, more mindful we are, the impact that we're having, of the wake that we're leaving, I think the more powerful lives we live, the better life we live. I was telling you before, I live in a house. We've got two roommates. Two of my best friends live with us here in this house. It's a big house. We see each other all the time. And we've got to be real conscientious of one another. Otherwise, it's pretty miserable to live with somebody else if they're not conscious, not aware, not caring, not being that way. We had 12 of our friends over last night. That's what I walked into when I got picked up from the airport. It was amazing. And music playing and people hanging out. And the only way that works is if everybody's taking care of the house and everybody's cleaning up after themselves. And I think that's a great parallel to living life and being aware, not just in your home, but when you go out. The more cognizant you are of what's happening around you, the more aware you are of the impact you're having on other people, the more pleasurable you are to be around, the more people want you to be around. And I think that's really the key to life. I think from a cellular level, we need to have this permeability where we give off energy and we get rid of things that are like building up nasty, whether it's literal toxins or emotional toxins. And we need to be able to receive good energy too. And to do that in a way that is not only healthy and sustainable for ourselves, but to this bigger ecological system of humanity. The goal is to bring as much awareness into our actions and our thoughts and then trying to clear the system so that we can truly be our best selves. We are energetic beings and we're antennas. We are constantly picking up and giving off energy. And when you tend to your own energy levels, when you tend to your own energetic well-being, when you make sure that your cup is overflowing because you've taken care of yourself, I think that's when the real magic happens. And that's when you really start to connect with others when you're out and about. I can be in a supermarket. I'll just be picking bananas and somebody will come up to me and say, hey, let's strike up a conversation. You look like somebody I need to talk to. I love that. Thank you, Craig. We could talk so much more, but I'm just really curious and I'm so excited to check out In Harmony and all of the products that you have. Can you tell everyone who's listening where they can find them? It'll also be in the show notes. Yeah, absolutely. So our website is IamInHarmony.com. Two most important words in the English language, I am, because anything that comes after it, you are. We're on all the socials, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you name it. Search for In Harmony or In Harmony Media or In Harmony Interactive, In Harmony Music Meditations is our app. And I'm the guy on the other side of the comments. I'm the guy on the other side of the DMs. That's my role. And I've got an incredible team that helps me to stay on the front line, so to speak. So if you've got a question, I've got an answer. I'd love to connect with you and thank you for having me. Thank you for sharing with me with your audience and super grateful to be here and thank you for our time together. Yeah, thank you so much. I already just feel relaxed just from your energy through the screen. So thank you so much. And for everybody who's listening, as always, I'm pulling for you. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Redefining Movement. If you like what you've heard, please like and subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Feel free to leave us a rating and review or share with someone you know. Check us out at www.litmethod.com. 